has been full of drama, but if anybody told me a month ago where I would spend my 37th birthday, you'd probably be shot through the air. But here I am in my beautiful Fasti Hospital in Berlin, in Germany, where I've been receiving my treatment <coughs> as a COVID patient. And I just received good news today that my repeat COVID test has turned negative. And I think that's such a huge milestone for me because in the last one week, it has been living one day at a time. I'm called Dr. Fiona Atheben, and I work with the World Health Organization at the Region Office for Africa, based in Brazzaville in Congo, where for the last few months, my colleagues and I have been really working tirelessly day and night to ensure that African countries are prepared and they have everything that they need to fight corona. So my whole life changed about a month ago. On the 12th of April, it was Easter Sunday, when I received an email from my office the amount of contacts I should come in on Tuesday, on the 14th, to have my test done. Passed. A week later, I received a call from our doctor who said, oh, I wanted to find out how you're doing, but on top of that, I wanted to give you an update on the results. It's okay, so four of the 44 contacts that were tested have turned positive. And my response was, oh, sorry. And if I finish that statement, it was like, oh, and unfortunately, you are one of them. I don't remember how I felt. I was surprised. I said, fine. I know, number one, I have the attitude. I have the body, the immunity, and all the resources I needed to fight it. But I was in a country that has no ICU. That's the only symptom I had. I'd been coughing for like two weeks. But I was healthy and I was still working. I was monitoring my temperatures every day. Life went on until last weekend. I don't even remember the date. But this was on my day six, my day five or six. I started feeling weak. It was a Saturday. I started feeling weak. I started feeling dizzy when I stood up. I started feeling some. I think I'm feeling breathless, but life went on. Sunday, I woke up in the morning. I wasn't really feeling fine. So I asked um, the clinic to bring me a pulse oximeter. This is a gadget to, to test. Uh, the oxygenation of the <coughs> So the driver brings me a pulse mix and an oxygen cylinder in my house. I will know what to do with it when the time comes. Tuesday morning, they tell me, mm -mm, mm -mm, you need to be moved out of there. I'm sure with no ICU. But I didn't think I would need ICU. My head was in my hands. I had never seen anything like that. My head was bursting. Gosh, anyway, so at least it was sim a simple room with a bed, with oxygen. I received care for as much as they could do. But it was scared, I was alone. I spent hours and it's scary, it's not nice. Now, there was an evacuation flight for the hypertensive stroke patient, somebody in coma. But there is an evacuation flight for COVID. Now, this one is an experience nobody should go through. I was picked in the week with an ambulance, everybody in PPE. And then they took me to the airport through the cargo. I've been informed. My plane to pick me up had landed the previous evening. This was a special um, evacuation air ambulance that came to a US flight, came through Madrid in Spain, then came to Congo, would sleep over, then pick you up in the morning and bring you to Berlin. So in between, one of the options for my repatriation was a repatriation back to Ghana. And for me, for family reasons, for all reasons, going back home was an option. Because I know we had the services, I knew we had the expertise. To me, I wasn't really sick. All through this COVID, I told myself, I will maintain my smile. And I've maintained my smile from the beginning to the end. The hostesses were the doctors and nurses now come out in full the protective equipment. The things you see, the everything. She comes and dresses me up from head to toe. I had not worn those things. And I had no idea what they felt like. Those things are uncomfortable, they're hot. So I'm told to get onto the flight and I'm told, do not touch anywhere. Everybody is out on the plane. I could see the 
they obtained the pilots outside. I was fine. I was fine psychologically. My only prayer was, Lord, you know, I get to the room safe. I don't want to die on that plane. And then what I saw is what shocked me. That sight will not leave my brain for the next many years. I felt like this, I don't know, I felt like a bomb, like a nuclear weapon that would erupt any time because the plane had been lined. I don't know if you understand. So we had this plastic shooting, something like this exactly, that had covered the whole plane from top to bottom, the seats, everything was cordoned off and had been given this light narrow path to go through. You can imagine with my size and with my wide hips. And I get to the back and there's something that looked like a tent. Transparent, half, half black, half transparent, with zips. It had, it had a stretch and everything as I checked as I was on this side. And I was gonna stay alone. So they told me if I need anything, call on this radio. Press this button and call. We'll also talk to you through this one. If you need oxygen before we come in, because I had to dress up fully before coming. I got in there, I prayed to God, but throughout that flight, it was a 10 hour flight, I prayed to God and said, anything that happens in here, one, I do not want oxygen, but if they choose that I get oxygen, it's okay. Two, I was grateful. My <coughs> whole journey was full of gratitude. So number one, who am I to go through this experience? Number two, that the resources have been made available. I am a doctor, so I could see the effort that these people were putting in to save an African life. And people who had traveled for a whole day to come and save my life. And I knew people were waiting for me across. I knew there were many people. There were so many people that worked to clear the flight, to get permits for landing. My, my bosses that had to sign off papers that team in HQ that was really working day and night to ensure that this flight comes. I was in, but in Uganda, I really want to appreciate everybody ran really fast. My colleagues contacted the country, the DG of Ministry of Health and Minister of Health and the President all approved my coming after the positive COVID case to be treated back at home. But what delayed <laughs> is a different story. We arrived here in Berlin, the reception I got I knew. We've gotten out of the plane again for PPE and get into this intensive uh, care unit uh, track. Very nice with everything. So they helped me lie down in my PPE, they do all their monitoring, then they ride off to the, to the hospital. I was taken straight to ICU where I met very nice doctors, very nice nurses. They gave me English speaking doctors. I was in ICU for a night and a day. And then I was uh, transferred to, to the ward where I received very good care. People wearing PPEs I love my normal life. I've not been out there. <coughs> I don't know what it would look like to see. Look at people who are not covered up because that's my life. I've never been in my house for since since the twelfth. I've not I was in my house. Then from then on everybody I've seen with their two eyes is in PPE. It's all I hear people screaming, people cross all I hear people screaming, people groaning, people moaning out of pain, and all I do is pray for them, say a prayer for them because I can't see them. And then also be thankful to God that it is not me, it could have been me. Anyway, why am I telling my story? For me it is one to share my experience, two, gratitude to God. Because who am I to go through this experience? And thanks to people that thought I mattered, I kept connected to the rest of the world. I have seen people that care deeply about me, people that I did not know actually cared about me. I have seen the hand of God in my life. I in the ICU, I was the healthiest patient. I could see other people who were in coma. People are very sick in the world now. I, I can't see anybody, but I can hear them. I hear people in pain. I'm not in pain. I've been repaired now. Negative. The other thing, the reason I'm doing this video is the stigma. Africa is full of stigma. I grew up in an era of HIV. I know what stigma means. 
This is a clear body says I have no corona anymore. But I can assure you that dare I hear anybody stigmatizing, especially my children. Me and God will tell you this virus is real and it's not a joke. I know in Africa it's all about COVID and lockdown and lockers and everything. You will get it and you will understand that actually chips are Irish potatoes. This COVID seems distant from us. It is not respectful of anybody, any race, any social class, any religion. It doesn't matter. I moved from the front line to a COVID case. I contributed to statistics of positive cases when countries were reporting their numbers. Stay home, stay safe. COVID is real.